The doors to the Patients Getting Paid membership community are now wide open. This is a community of people with chronic illness learning to find and create flexible remote work that accommodates their health. I call us chronic preneurs. There are trainings, coaching calls, networking opportunities, co-workings, and a ton of resources. Want to take better care of yourself and still generate an income? Join us at patientsgettingpaid.com. Welcome to the FUMS Now podcast show, where you'll gain information, inspiration, and motivation for living your best life with multiple sclerosis. Find us online at FUMSnow.com. I'm your host, Kathy Reagan Young. Hello and welcome. I appreciate you choosing to spend some time with me today. My guest is a blogger and podcaster that specializes in the world of caregiving. Super important. But first, let me remind you that you can share your FUMS spirit with the world by wearing some FUMS merchandise available over at FUMSnow.com slash shop. And if you aren't on the FUMS newsletter yet, do yourself a favor and sign up. I do all the work for you. I curate articles and studies, points of interest, the top six topics in MS for that week. It's called the FUMS Six Pack, and you can sign up for it at FUMSnow.com slash get the scoop. Elizabeth Miller is a family caregiver, caregiver advocate, speaker, author, podcast host, and certified caregiving consultant. She's busy. She's the founder of Happy Healthy Caregiver, a top 10 caregiving blog and podcast. Her personal experiences caring for aging parents with chronic and terminal illnesses and for a sibling with developmental disabilities inspired her to create Happy Healthy Caregiver in 2015. Let's go meet her. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you, Kathy. I have to go check out that merchandise. I love your, <laughs> I love your F-U-M-S. Like, yes. It's empowering to speak to this monster as it deserves, right? So <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Give it the finger. Anyway, thanks so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. As we were saying before I hit record, we're at over a hundred episodes and I, I know I haven't dedicated even one episode to caregivers and they're just, they make so much possible for us. So I'm sorry at that oversight and I'm so grateful that you're here today. So thanks for being here. Let's start with your relationship with caregiving. You offer a ton of resources and advice for caregivers on your website, but how did you get into the field? Well, it was not by choice, frankly, yeah. you know, probably similar to, you know, your journeys. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a mudslide, frankly, with my parents. You know, most of my adult life, they've had chronic comorbidities mm -hmm. and neither one of my parents are alive. Um, I still in this, thank you, still in a support role for my, my brother, Tom, but I'm not his primary caregiver. Okay. And my husband and I were, you know, back in 2014, before I started Happy Healthy Caregiver, we were squeezed in the sandwich generation, taking care of our kids that were middle school, starting out in high school, and our parents' needs just were spiraling, frankly, yes. out, of, out of control. And we were working full time and felt like we were a little bit younger than most people our age mm. who were dealing with all of this. Mm -hmm. And we felt, you know, isolated, alone learning a new vocabulary and it just didn't recognize who I was seeing in the mirror anymore. Oh, I bet. Yeah, I can relate to that. I my parent I had older parents and I had younger kids. So I and honestly, I remember saying to a friend of mine who was not going through this but eventually did, and I said, it's it's very similar. <laughs> What I'm dealing with with the kids and my parents is oddly similar, but yes. it's a lot. It's a lot. It's messy. I think the one big difference is that, you know, my kids, because they, you know, did not have special needs and things, they were becoming more independent and doing more things on their own. Yeah. Whereas the reverse was parents happening. going the other way. Right. Exactly. That's right. the one, the one big shift. So talk to us, if you don't mind, about caring for your parents. What were kind of the hardest challenges for you, other than also having kids at the same time? <laughs> mm -hmm. I, You know, I think it was feeling like you've got to put your life on hold and mm. resent a lot of anger and resentment in my mm. situation because it wasn't like they had a diagnosis of something that was out of their control. Like I was 
pissed off, frankly, that my parents were putting my whole family in this situation because they had neglected their health. You know, they, yeah. they were, I may have felt differently. I think if it was, you know, a, a cancer diagnosis right. or MS diagnosis or something that was completely out of their control, but it was, right. they, they had not prioritized their health and happiness. Mm-hmm. My mother-in-law did not prioritize. She was a, you know, a lifelong smoker mm-hmm. and I was mad. I think yeah. that was the most challenging thing is like, I'm supposed to be, you know, live in this peak of my life, frankly, right. and and you're robbing me of this. Yeah, because of choices you made. And I hear that and I, I'm grateful that you made the differentiation. But yet I think that I think that there are there's room even for those caregivers who are caring for people with diagnoses and whatnot to feel all the feels, right? So feel, yes. you're going to probably feel some anger and perhaps some resentment and like you being burdened and whatnot. And I just want to put it out there that I, I think that's probably pretty damn normal. And it's normal um, for like, sure. Don't feel guilty about that. It's, you know, you're living your life and being sort of saddled with this. I mean, honestly, this is, the, it's that type of thing that worries the shit out of me for when I get older that keeps me going to Pilates and keeps me, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to do that to my kids. That is, it is a driving force for me that I just want to do as much as I can to be as healthy as long as I can. But I do want to say to those caregivers who are listening, it's all normal stuff and and acceptable and don't feel badly. Like, don't add that to your burden load. Like, that's no. normal stuff to feel. And I do think that feeling the feels is super important. And, you know, I, I was an emotion stuffer oh, yeah. at, at the beginning, you know, and then it started right. appearing in different ways. You know, my, sure. your, your body will, will, will will show you that yes. that's not gonna, we're going to work. You know, you start gaining weight. I, you know, wasn't feeling like my bright and shiny self. My, I had horrible acne, um, mm-hmm. you know, just all kinds of things. My, my temper was, was very short. Yeah. So when I say I didn't recognize myself in the mirror, that was kind of, it, it was just like, I've always like, kind of literally, this, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been this glass, glass half full kind of person. And so it, it took like a, a mindset shift and a lot of intention mm. to make that happen. And that's, you know, when you say I didn't want to reproduce this situation for my kids, like that, that is my motivation behind yeah. happy, healthy caregiver. Like we, as family caregivers, we constantly put everybody's needs first before our own. And that doesn't work. It's, it's a road to burnout. And so Truth. flipping that on its, on its head is, is not the norm, but I challenge people to say, watch what will happen when you do that in your life and just watch how the positive ripple effect will happen in all of your relationships and your own health and happiness. And it's a trial and error for sure. So true. Well, I'm, I'm going to say the normal uh, example that I'm sure you hear all the time too, but, but it makes so much sense. You know, when you're on an airplane and the oxygen mass drops, they tell you to put yours on first, right? Take care of yourself first because so that you are able to take care of others. Makes sense. Makes sense. And I can espouse this, but as a mother, I never did it. That's my truth. I always put the kids first and, and anyway, that's a whole nother story over another bottle of wine. But um, (laughs) so do you have a couple like happy, healthy caregiver tips you can share? Yes. I, you know, a lot of what I share is just what has either worked for me or has worked for a lot of the the clients that I coach. And what I will say is that it's not a one size fits all. Like everybody's self-care is a little bit different for them. You know, for me, because of my parents' situation, like physical self-care was kind of where I started in my journey, like what I was putting into my body, exercise, and even sleep didn't come until way later than that. But it's really about a lot of, you know, it's practical self-care of getting your paperwork in order, uh, professional self-care about setting boundaries between work and life and asking for help among Mm -hmm. different people, emotional, we talked about the emotional self-care. So I have tips in a lot of different areas. I, no matter what area I would say the one of the biggest things for me was to just schedule it. Like it was not going to happen unless yeah. I made it an intention. And so literally blocking out time on my calendar a couple times a week and having that conversation with my husband, like, 
We are losing our minds. We must start doing this. I'm going to do mornings. You're going to, you know, you've got the kids before you kind of get I'll I'll handle afternoons. And it was this conversation that we had about how we were going to juggle and then really holding myself to that time. And, and maybe, I, you know, some mornings I would feel like I wanted to write. Writing was very therapeutic for me. Mm. So I would go to the coffee shop. I would get myself a nice hot beverage. I would sit down. And that's really how I started blogging during mm-hmm. when I had no business, frankly, adding one more thing to my plate. But it was... <laughs> It was for me. It was for me. Yes. Yeah, that's great. And then, and, and, and then you helped others because of it. That's awesome. Yeah. And then I would say trying different things would be my next tip is like, because everything is different. If somebody says something that really helps them find, you know, for me, self-care is either what's going to make me feel more energized or make me feel more at peace. And it was a very exploratory process for me, particularly while I was caregiving is what, what can I add, you know, in five or 10 minutes, not these mega sessions, but that's going to make me feel more energized and more at peace. And so I started trying aromatherapy. I, you know, started doing, trying tapping or meditation or music, listening to music. It's like, okay, this works, this doesn't. It's almost like trying clothes on Right. See what what resonates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. And, and something I have had to come to, and it's funny because I'm the one with MS, but I've been a caregiver too. Something I had to come to that I'm sure is a mantra of yours, which is self-care is not selfish. No. Right. And I think too often that's a message that we've got in our psyche that we have to fight and, and just, you know, I just want to say that one more time. Self-care is not selfish. And that's true across the board, but I think caregivers, you need to hear that. (laughs) You really need to hear that. You are listening to this show on the Offscript Health Radio Network. Yes, I said radio. My name is Matthew Zachary, co-founder and CEO here at Offscript Health. And I wanted to thank you, the listener, for supporting our hosts, their guests, and our entire network of acclaimed shows, limited series, and major documentaries. In doing so, you are helping to fulfill our mission to make healthcare suck less for all of us together. To learn more about Offscript Health and our network of other shows, series, and documentaries, visit offscripthealth.com. That's offscript, no T, dot com. Is there something that you'd like to see changed in the healthcare industry that could help caregivers? I just saw your eyes light up. (laughs) Yes. I mean, if you have some ideas. (laughs) If I could wave a magic wand and make something happen, I think what was so frustrating for me as a caregiver is, you know, you're that person going into the appointments and sitting in the hospital chairs and people are talking to you like you're the hub of the wheel that's connecting everything together. And yet... You know, for me, it was, you know, here's information about diabetes and here's how you can do the wound care when you get home. And but nobody was ever saying, wow, you've really got a lot on your plate. How are you managing this? You were probably losing your mind. Mm -hmm. Here are some resources in the area that you can tap into that would really help you. And so I would just love a PDF. That's all I'm asking for. Like a little, a worksheet that people can hand out and say, obviously you're the caregiver. And by the way, did you know you're called that? Because we don't sometimes self-identify it as a family caregiver. And then when we don't do that, we don't connect to the resources and you need that term to kind of put into your Google search and say, right. great point. You know, family yeah. caregiver support. And I live in Atlanta, Atlanta and see what comes up. I am hopefully helping with that, like just by meeting people and be like, you're a family caregiver. Did you know you can do this, this and this? And so that's my goal is to fast track people to resources. But we really need the healthcare system to get on board with 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 helping with that, because our system is really fragmented and broken. It is is so jacked up. Don't get me started. Um, (laughs) But I love I think, you know, kind of. The first step is recognize, as you said, recognizing yourself as a caregiver, but others recognizing the role and giving weight to it and, yes. and, and checking in with them too. I just recently lost my brother and his girlfriend was by his side every step of the way. She was amazing. 
And I made it a point to check on her too, because I just, I recognized what a huge job that is and how depleting. And, and I will say she's my hero in so many ways, but one of them is that she would say, I need some downtime. I need some, I need somebody to come and sit with him because I need to go for a walk or I need a day off or I need Mm -hmm. some time. I need some alone time. And that's sort I was so proud of her because that's, that can be hard to, 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 particularly if you're a people pleaser at all and pointing at me. Yes. Um, but it's so important and depleting yourself in the end is depleting, you know, and taking away from the person that you're giving care to because you, well, it's not an unlimited supply. I mean, we take care of our luxury cars, right? Like we've got to get them washed. We rotate their tires. We put gas and premium gas in them. And, and yet we just feel like we, if we think of our body as a car, like we can't just run this thing into the ground. Exactly. This is an investment and we want to this investment to last a lifetime. Exactly. And I'm interested to hear that you just said you're supposed to wash your car because you should see mine right now. Whatever. Well, we all have our things we (laughs) neglected. My car is, yes. Well, Um, I'm happy to say I'm taking better care of me than my car. How about that? Good. (laughs) Good. Yay. So you worked, as you referenced, a full-time job while raising two children, helping family caregivers, being a family caregiver yourself. How were you able to juggle all of that? And were you able to integrate self-care into that at that time? Or did that go out the window and it's just retrospectively that you're like, okay, this is what I should have done? Yeah, no, it had to happen. It was Good. it was intentional. And it was those trips down to see mom and dad where I was like, I got to figure this out. You know, this, this plan's not working. What helped me initially was Instagram. And, you know, I saw somebody do a challenge of 100 days of happy, I think they did. And I was like, I'm going to do 100 days of healthy. I'm going to take a picture of like one thing I'm doing for myself every day. Oh. And 100 days. And that- I love it. I figured like if I could- make it a habit, I could maybe stick with it. So that was kind of the, what happened before the blog. But I think what happens is people, it's an all or nothing mentality that a lot of people have. It's like, oh, if I can't, you know, if I can't go to the gym for an hour, I'm not going to go at all. Or if I can't walk for, you know, a long time, I'm not going to do it. And and I challenge that to just say five, 10 minutes, like those things all add up. So I had to get they creative. Do. When yeah. I was working and I would, um, you know, t- during my lunch, I would go and take a walk outside. We had a nice little loop that I could do. And sometimes I would listen to a podcast and I call that a two for like a two for one or a buy one. get Right. One. Yeah, I love but that. I would listen to audiobooks on the way to work or, you know, while I was waiting for my kids in the carpool, like I might blog while they were at volleyball practice or baseball practice practice. So I just started trying to really, and that's something that I help people with is like looking at their schedule and, you know, it's typical. We use that in quotes because it's like, you know, it varies week to week, but there's, there is some room in there that we can either say no to some things and free Mm -hmm. up some time, delegate some things or repurpose and get, you know, get a little, little focused on it. I love that, that you help people with that, because I can only imagine if you looked at, if you looked at my schedule, but my point is another set of eyes looking at it is really different than you looking at it. And I think if you looked at my schedule, you would probably have some questions for me about like, is this necessary or could you move it? Whatever that I might not, you know, I'm so used to just my schedule. It would be really helpful, I think, and scary, quite frankly, to have somebody look at my schedule and and kind of throw in a question here and there, like, could you, do you really have to do that? Or could you put in some more time for exercise or whatever it is? I I love that. So yeah. you, you referenced that you do coaching. Is that part of what you do in your coaching? I do some, I do coaching for caregivers. I'm not a licensed counselor. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a financial planner. I'm a person who's been through the caregiving trenches and I have a certification as a certified caregiving consultant where I can meet caregivers where they are and kind of help them with, um, you know, what, where, the, where they're stuck potentially. And it could be self-care. It could be, they just want someone to talk to, you know, it could be that they're, um, having some kind of a pressing worry that's happening. Uh, and you know, we, we, Together, we work on how we can move past that because, 
Uh, and I do offer a complimentary session. So the first session is complimentary is 30 minutes to see, could we work well together? Yeah, this is what it's fit. like to work with me. Exactly. Because, awesome. um, and so that is, that is something I, I offer. Um, I also do like, you'd mentioned a lot of public speaking and then yes. blo- blogging and working with, um, partners is how I monetize in a bigger way because I no longer work my full-time job. This is what I do. This is what Full- you do. I love mm-hmm. it. Very worthy. Um, and, and then you wrote a book. In your spare time. Yes. Called yes. Just, just For You, A Self-Care Journal, and it guides the writer on a journey of self-discovery 365 days a year. Tell, tell me a little bit more about that book. So one of the things that was helping me be, make self-care an intention was to do like a, a daily bullet journal, but it wasn't specifically on a topic of self-care. So that's where the idea came from is like, how can we, how can we do in a little lift you know, make this an intention. So I wrote it with caregivers in mind, but it could be for anyone that's trying to prioritize self-care. So all of them, what what can happen sometimes in people's caregiving journey is that they, they completely lose their identity. And it's so focused on what everybody else is doing. They can't even remember what they like to do and what they enjoy talking about. Uh, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this, this just is some memory joggers. You can write a sentence, you can write a paragraph, you can do it every day or not. It could last you five years if you want to. But um, so some of them would say, what are you looking forward to do this week? You know, instead mm-hmm. of just kind of getting in these loops of like, It's just Uh, all heavy. Yeah, it's all the same. Uh, Yes. What's one thing you did today to prioritize your own health and wellness? Name name one place you've always wanted to visit. How Uh, could you strengthen your support system? So things like that. It's like yeah, um, just get thinking intentional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And by the way, uh, as those who are uh, longtime listeners know, I put all of these links into the show notes. So I'll put a link to that that book as Perfect. well and to your podcast and to your blogs. Do you have more than one blog? Is that right? Just one blog. Happy one Healthy blog. Caregiver. Yep. Okay. That's it. Um, and the podcast and all of that can be found in the same place. Okay. Yep. How, often do, you, how off, often do you come out with uh, podcasts? I do every other week. Okay. So every every other Wednesday, we uh, I publish a new episode, and then I've started to do Instagram lives in between. Oh, cool! So there's a lot of interest in the care podcast, and I love. I have a broadcast journalism major that I never really used. Uh, <laughs> so I love doing it, but the podcast is, as you know, Kathy, oh, it's work. Sister, um, you're so, t- I need a caregiver yes. for this, and I have two now. I started a second one. What? Was oh, you I did? Thinking? Yeah. So it's it's <laughs> definitely a labor of love. I love it, but I have you know probably a list of a hundred people that you know as stories I would love to spotlight. And I think what makes the podcast unique is you do have to have personal caregiving experience to be a, to be spotlighted on the happy healthy caregiver podcast because so you're I, are you yes. do you have guests you're interviewing yes. is that oh, okay great sometimes Excellent. it's me the yeah. initial the early days like I was so overwhelmed with with <laughs> everything that I just was doing an audio version of my blog posts like those yeah. are my early early podcast episodes but then I did start spotlighting stories um, and we talk about caregiving we and we share tips and we talk about self-care and we share tips because Caregivers are the experts, you know, and they might have written a book and they might have done something amazing, but it came after their caregiving right. experience. Right. Yes. Oh, I love that. Oh, I can't wait. I'm going to listen. Yeah. And is it also called Happy Healthy Caregiver? Your podcast? Happy Healthy Caregiver. Yeah. That's excellent. Well, okay. So I will, again, I'm going to put all of this in the show notes so people can find you, but is it just happy, help, happy healthy caregiver.com? Is that where they go? That's kind of the hub of everything. Okay. And I'll put in socials and all that kind of stuff too. So, um, yes, I'm even on TikTok. I've, I've, I've dragged my feet for a while. Oh, when do you have time for all this? I'm so impressed. You got, now I'm not caregiving. I'm not an active caregiver, you know, primary caregiver and I'm an empty nester. So, ah, there it is. (laughs) The past seven years have changed and this is my full-time job now. So, um, that, that has changed a lot of things, but it's, uh, I also, like another tip, I think for probably women in general is like done is better than perfect is kind of my motto. Yes. 
I, that that is the way it goes. So I don't do a lot of like if I'm doing a video or podcast, like it's it's one and done. Like it's we're getting it. this done. Yes. yes. I always say progress, not perfection. So there you go. Perfect. Same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I needed to come to that mantra because two podcasts and yeah, a lot. So anyway, this has been super interesting and I'm so glad that we did this and I hope you'll come back again. And I hope everybody out there, whether you're the one receiving the caregiving or you are the caregiver, will go check this out. Listen to the podcast. It sounds super inspirational and the blog and everything else. Um, And Yay, caregivers. I just want to give a shout out to all our caregivers and say thank you, thank you. We don't say thank you enough to you. So grateful. And Elizabeth, I'm so grateful that you recognized the role and how, you know, under recognized it is and giving a shout out and giving support to these very, very important people in our lives. So thank you. And thank you for being here and sharing all this. I really, really appreciate what you're doing and I appreciate you sharing it with us today. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks so much. Quick shout out to Steve Woodward at podcastingeditor.com for the fantastic work on this podcast, including editing, show notes, and ingenious ideas. If you'd like help with your podcast, whether you're just starting out or an old pro, visit podcastingeditor.com and tell Steve I sent you. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate you listening to the FUMS podcast show. Be sure to subscribe to it so you won't miss an episode. You can do that right on the website at FUMSnow.com. While you're there, sign up for the free email list so you'll be among the first to know of any new findings in MS research, new therapies and products, as well as any blog posts and podcast episodes I release. Want to chat with others in the FUMS community? Join us on Facebook at FUMS Now. Thanks again, and don't forget to talk to the stupid disease as it deserves. Tell it FUMS every day.